Hi, I'm Nick O'Leary from the Node-RED project, here with the release notes for the 1.2 release. In previous releases, when you import a flow, all of its nodes are assigned new identifiers. This meant, if you imported the flow again, you'd get a second complete copy. If that flow included configuration nodes or subflows that were identical to ones you already had, the editor would avoid importing a duplicate copy and reuse the existing ones. That's generally worked well, but on some occasions it wasn't ideal. In particular, if you wanted to import an update to a subflow you were using, there was no easy way to do it. It would be imported as a new subflow and you'd have to manually update all of the instances to the new subflow. With this release, when you import a flow that contains nodes you already have, the editor will now ask you what to do. In the case of subflows and configuration nodes, it gives you the option of replacing the instances you already have, rather than importing a copy. The projects feature now provides an option with a simplified Git workflow. The option, under user settings, lets you enable an automatic mode, where changes will be automatically committed with every deploy. Other project enhancements include the project settings dialog lets you edit the project's version. The flow file pretty option is now automatically enabled for projects unless you explicitly set it to false. Elsewhere in the editor, you can now reorder the sidebar tabs to whatever order you prefer. The palette manager has an option to upload a node module tar file rather than install from the catalog. That option can be disabled via the settings file. We've updated the editor component we use in the function node, which brings much better support for the latest JavaScript syntaxes. We've fixed a number of issues with the groups feature that were causing lockups. And we've also changed it so when you merge two groups together, it reuses the style options of the first group selected. In the runtime, we've updated how we store runtime settings. Previously, we stored them all in a single file, the .config.json file but we've now split that up into individual files so the user can be more selective over which parts of it you version control. If you have a backup script that includes the .config.json file, you'll need to update it to include those other files instead. The runtime will leave the existing .config.json in place in case you choose to downgrade, but it will no longer be updated or maintained. We've introduced a new runtime API, the Hooks API, which is part of the pluggable message routing work that's been on our roadmap for a very long time now. It's less relevant to end users at this point in time, but it's going to underpin a lot of the exciting features in the future, such as our flow debugger, distributed Node-RED runtimes, integrated flow testing. Some of the nodes have had some new features added. The trigger node can now be configured to set its delay or repeat interval using the message.delay property. The function node's setup code can now log and send messages. And more of the core nodes now implement the done API we introduced in 1.0, so they will work well with the complete node. Check the release notes for the list of nodes that have been updated. That's it for 1.2. Leave a comment to let us know what you think or come join us in the forum or Slack to join the conversation. And don't forget to like and subscribe for future updates.